some big news from Mid Journey, both good and bad. But starting with the good, we have our first look at the long awaited Mid Journey video. We're gonna take a look at it today and I gotta admit, kinda surprised me. We'll also talk about the bad news, namely the 800 pound mouse that is loose in the house. Plus some quick hits from Runway, Kriya introduces their own new AI image model and it looks pretty cool. Bike Dance has a new AI video model and Topaz introduces something that, well, I think we've all been waiting for, creative upscaling for video. Lots to cover, let's go dash dash video. Kicking off, yeah, Mid Journey has started its first round of user ratings for video. Now it is important to note here that this is like the earliest iteration of the model, they are still training it up. So what we're looking at here is not really refined. That said, I do think that there are a number of clues in here that give us an idea of what mid-journey video is going to be very good at once it is finally tuned up. In yesterday's office hours where video ranking was released, Midjourney CEO David Holtz uh, did let us know that we'd likely see a lot of wonk and jank since you know, obviously they are still tuning this up. So naturally I went to town and ranked, I think somewhere over 500 videos. And in the interest of fairness, I am mainly presenting outputs that well, I, you know, I think look good. We will take a look at some wonky outputs, namely to set expectations, but for purposes of this video, yeah, I am kind of cherry picking these results. I'm, I think that's only fair considering that this is the first round of a model that hasn't been released yet. In today's parlance, let's let them cook before you know we hold a Top Chef judging panel. So one of the first things that stood out to me is the model's ability to maintain that mid-journey aesthetic throughout its generation. And while that might seem a bit obvious, that was not something that I was necessarily putting money on. I think that anyone who has used a mid-journey image for image to video in any video generator, be it Runway, Kling, uh, Minimax, or Vio, has experienced that thing where as the generation continues, you sort of lose that core aesthetic. Even in a relatively simple generation like this, we've all seen you know outputs where the color temperature temperature or saturation might change. Some places where I think this holds up extremely well are with like animated type animations, I guess. Uh, you know, here we have this character that's you know, just a portrait shot. He's kind of looking around talking, um, but stylistically and aesthetically, he stays the same. Uh, these types of generations sometimes can wander off into like CGI territory or in this kind of hybrid retro futuristic output. I'll admit there's not a lot of motion happening here, but I think what I'm most interested in here is the continuity in terms of stylization and textures. In fact, I do think that if the mid journey video model does have a superpower, it is going to be for animation and like anime styles. And that's not to say it isn't capable of doing cinematic and realistic type outputs as we see here uh, in this video of someone who uh, has clearly learned a very valuable lesson about cooking with propane. And yes, that does mean that now all of our signature beautiful mid-journey women staring at the camera can blink and you know turn their head ever so slightly to the right or even make kissy faces at you. I'm telling you, sales of monitor wipes about to go through the roof. By the way, one thing I did want to point out with Kissy Face Girl here is uh, that teeth are looking really good in mid-journey video. In a few models recently, we have definitely seen some mouths from the big book of British smiles, but no, uh, mid-journey seems to pretty much have teeth on point here. But one thing I definitely wanted to point out is hands and fingers. It is very good at hands and fingers, which is actually kind of surprising. Is it perfect? No, it isn't. But, you know, hands and fingers are like the bane of AI image and video. And I, overall, I've been really impressed with what I've been seeing in Mid Journey Video. One place that I think Mid Journey Video really has a flex is in these like 360 rotations. Uh, this I definitely saw a lot of these. I think this also showcases a unique aspect of generating video on mid-journey natively. Uh, namely, if you try to take a mid-journey image and do like a 360 rotation on another video model, uh, a lot of times your other video model has to make up what it does not see. And a lot of times those aesthetics may not align with mid-journeys. And a lot has been made of Midjourney's ultimate goal of becoming a world simulator or like full on holodeck. And I do think that that is also showcased in this model with a lot of like interior shots and drone footage. And I do have to say that this stuff looks pretty good. It doesn't just look typically stock footage. It does have that Midjourney flair to it. Another spot that I was relatively surprised is with camera movement and energy in the shots. Uh, I don't know why I kind of expected the mid journey model to be a little more on the static side, but no, I mean, it, it definitely takes some swings. 
To note, at launch, uh, we will definitely not have any camera controls, and the prompting has been described as uh, medium performance. So, you know, not terrible, but not necessarily great. So depending on how this ultimately ends up shaking out, this may or may not be the model for, you know, maximum control. Uh, that said, it does look like you can get some pretty dynamic shots out of it. And again, the model does seem very good at contextually understanding what it's looking at, uh, considering we have this you know, video here of this woman wearing a mask with another face on it, uh, and the model isn't getting confused and animating the, uh, the face on the mask. In terms of the resolutions of the samples that we've been looking at, uh, they do seem to be coming in around 640 by 480, depending on aspect ratio. I'm not sure what the final resolution is going to be on release, but uh, it has been indicated that it probably isn't going to be extremely high. I'm thinking like, you know, 720. Additionally, there will also not be an upscaler, at least at launch. Uh, this is all to keep costs low. We'll circle back to cost in just a minute, but you know, in terms of the upscalers, uh, David Holt did mention that you know you can always kind of bring your own upscaler. Further on the mid-journey video model, there will be no text to video, uh, which kind of makes sense. I mean, it's mid-journey; you're generating images already. Uh, that said you will be able to bring in your own external images and generate in mid-journey. So that, that's kind of cool. Overall, I have to say that, you know, I don't think it's necessarily news that at least from a perception standpoint, mid-journey has appeared to be a bit on the ropes. And in terms of like, I guess the overall general conversation, uh, the video model has been seen as, as a bit of a make or break moment for them. In my opinion, they kind of pulled an interesting trick here and kind of skirted in between both options. Uh, look, I don't think that this is the video generator to rule them all. But as I would likely tell my kids, you don't need a VO3. We have a VO3 at home. I mean, with the limited amount of generations that we've seen thus far is doing the thing that I hoped Mid Journey would do, which is doing its own thing. Be the weird art school kid in the corner of the classroom. There is no need to go toe to toe with Google. And while initially the plan is to start off with, you know, five second videos at a lower resolution, uh, the reason for that is that they want to keep the costs low. Where that price point ultimately lands is still up in the air, but they are definitely signaling that they want it to be affordable. And that is really good to hear considering the rising costs of all of the other video generators. Obviously, I will be keeping a very keen eye on Midjourney Video, and I will let you know as it develops. Uh, speaking of which, the other big story coming out of Midjourney is the lawsuit filed against them by the House of the Mouse and Universal. Disney and Universal have issued a 110-page complaint uh, against Midjourney, obviously citing uh, copyright infringement. Ultimately, according to the complaint, what Disney and Universal are looking for uh, is uh, essentially, uh, you know, any profit made by Midjourney that can be traced back to the alleged infringement or up to $150,000 per infringed work. So, you know, anytime that you generated a Chewbacca, $150,000 check. Additionally, they're asking for a court order that would bar you from the ability to generate a, you know, minion or a Chewbacca and, of course, attorney fees because, you know, somebody's got to get paid. So where does this leave Midjourney? Well, ultimately, I mean, they've just joined a growing club uh, that includes, of course, OpenAI, Stability, who are being sued by Getty Images, Suno and Udio, who are being sued by essentially the entire music industry, Meta, Perplexity, and so on. Given that there was an office hours yesterday, David was asked to comment and, you know, naturally said he could not do so. But he did say that he believes that Midjourney will be around for a very long time. As we've seen, these cases do tend to move at a glacial pace. So, you know, I actually don't see Midjourney going anywhere anytime soon. Moving on, Runway have introduced a chat mode. This one is in beta. I've not had a ton of time to play around with it. Luckily for us, the Dimension Door did and put together uh, this little sample here um, where, you know, we begin with an image of a character and uh, give it the prompt to uh, create five angles of this character in this scene. The chat mode is obviously very happy to go through and generate up five more uh, still images. And then we get the prompt, what do you think we should do to turn this into a consistent narrative? Once again, chat is more than happy to provide ideas like establishing the scene, building tension, uh, you know, character moment, et cetera, et cetera. From there, Door was like, yeah, go ahead, do that. And indeed, once again, uh, Runway was more than happy to comply. And, you know, we ended up getting some video generated. So I definitely will swing back over. I really do enjoy this like new era of chat editing. It's a lot of fun. 
Moving over to Korea, they have released their first and own image model, Korea One. Uh, this is obviously releasing in a few days. We'll take a look at it in just a minute because I think it's doing some pretty cool stuff. Uh, obviously, they are touting the fact that uh, these are AI images that don't look so AI. And indeed, it is a very fast model, as they say here, uh, about seven seconds. I would say about that. And as a massive bonus, everyone's favorite four letter F word, it is free. So kicking off some tests with our man in a blue business suit who we last saw hitchhiking down a desert highway with his wolf buddy, uh, we end up with this. Well, I did a prompt for the oncoming truck uh, because I plan to turn it into a video of our truck driver driving completely past our blue business suit guy and his wolf, as I probably would too. Uh, this video was generated in Kling 2.1, which you can do obviously right on Korea, which is always pretty handy. Overall, I think the model looks pretty good. Here's another one of our uh, FBI agents agent drinking coffee in a Pacific Northwest diner. Definitely does handle these more modern moody type vibes. Uh, my guy here is like double fist in his coffee, man after my own heart. But one of the cooler aspects of this new model is that you can still use your own train styles uh, as well. Uh, I did go over this in another video. I'll have that link down below. Uh, but you know, here, I just because I had her, I trained up some like alternate images of our character from the bridge a while back. And so we can bring that in by adding in a style. And additionally, we can actually, you know, uh, create another style as well or, or merge it with another style, I would say. Um, in this case, let's use, I mean, the fantasy theme is the one that makes the most sense. So let's go ahead and add that and run it and see what we get. And we end up with some pretty cool results and, you know, ultimately a level of consistency with the character as well. And it is kind of always a matter of playing around to find kind of the sweet spot between, uh, you know, a character or your style and the other style as to have one not overpower the other. But uh, again, as we're sort of looking here, I mean, the model moves pretty quickly. So you can you can kind of uh, suss out like a good middle ground pretty quickly. And of course, the benefit of the entire Korea platform is the fact that you can do all kinds of things like, well, take one of your images and generate it up in WAN 2.1, which is kind of an underrated video model, in my opinion. It's very good and uh, much cheaper than, say, VO3 or Kling 2.1. Taking a quick look at some community outputs in Korea 1, just because well, I don't cover every aesthetic territory, uh, Stefano Mantella uh, gave us some pretty cool uh, photographic shots here. In particular, I really did like this dystopian sci-fi lady with giant robot standing behind her because mm, giant robot. Saqib gave us sushi chef Shiba Inu. That is really hard to say. I mean, honestly, this is pretty good. There's a lot of ways that this image could go wrong. And, you know, no, it still manages to maintain like the photorealism of, well, a sushi chef with a Shiba Inu head. Goo Vision gives us a kind of a nice surrealistic image here. A um, lot of details packed into here, a lot of texture. Um, yeah, this looks really cool. Friend of the channel, Brent Lynch, gives us a female warrior standing on a volcano. I don't know how she got up here. I hope she knows how she's going to get down. Overall, I'm really impressed with the photographic nature of Korea One. Again, this will be available to everyone in just a few days. In the meantime, it is available for Max users uh, starting now. Rounding out with something that I am very excited for, uh, Topaz Labs have been on a bit of a roll. Last week, they released Bloom, their first creative image upscaler, and uh, soon we will be getting Astra, their first creative video upscaler. So much like Bloom, it looks like we will have some options with Astra. Uh, we can upscale in precise mode to restore and enhance details while keeping the you know overall integrity of your video. Or you can get a little bit crazier with it with a creative mode to reimagine and enhance details. I mean, you know which one I'm going to be testing out first. The creative mode apparently, at first at least, will only support videos up to 15 seconds long. But they do say that they will gradually increase that limit. And they do mention that the creative bold option will work best with AI generated videos, but may introduce artifacts and hallucination details on old and heavily degraded videos, which actually might end up being a cool effect. This one has not been released yet, but there is a wait list uh, that's linked down below. Uh, so definitely sign up so that you can get early beta access and give it a try. I am indeed on the wait list and I've been kind of poking at Topaz uh, to see if I can get early access. As soon as I do, I will definitely be showcasing it for you all. Finally rounding out, and I just, I really did not get a chance to get to this one, but uh, ByteDance did release a new video model called Seed Dance. Um, yeah, this looks pretty good. Uh, it's actually funny enough on the top of the uh, AI leaderboards right now. I'm not quite 
sold on that necessarily but i mean it does look like a pretty good model this one is not open source it is a closed source model uh currently it is available as the mini version on the dreamina platform uh so you can try it out if you want to i mean there are aspects of it that look good don't get me wrong it's a good looking model I, i'm not sure if it's you know top of the leaderboard but it does look good I'll definitely try to get to that one next week. I mean, new video model. I'm, I'm excited to try it out, but this has been a pretty crazy week. And uh, to be honest, I think it's just going to be par for the course for the rest of the summer. So uh, yeah, I will definitely be seeing you soon. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.